What is going on, everybody? It is Treeb from Treeb Talks here, and the day has finally come, right? Where we are mere days away from the kickoff of my favorite team, your favorite team, and your mom's favorite team, the Jacksonville Jaguars season opener. I can almost taste it. I'm recording this and should be dropping this on Wednesday, so we are just Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, had to count it on my fingers because I couldn't think of it off the top of my head four days away from Trevor Lawrence's season debut, Urban Meyer's season debut as a coach, and, you know, it has some of those <clears throat> some of those college opening game feels to it, doesn't it, right? This is a brand new franchise to me. Everything that is going on inside of the Jacksonville Jaguars is brand new to me, right? There's a lot of new things that they're doing that makes them feel different, that kind of sets them apart from prior teams um, in Jacksonville's past. And I will go over those things and discuss in detail how this Jaguar team kind of feels different and how it's starting its season, and kind of discuss how that will look moving forward. We're going to break down the matchups between the Houston Texans in the Jaguars season opener, and more. But without further ado, ladies and gentlemen, this is the Jacksonville Jaguars versus Houston Texans week number one preview. Alrighty, first of all, before I get into this video, if you want to support your boy, not only can you subscribe and like the video, because, realistically, I should be posting two videos a week, but you know how your boy has been in the past with saying that he is not necessarily the most consistent at keeping those kind of promises. We are still going to try and do the Picks, pro uh, Picks podcast, and I'm going to try to get a Jags preview and a Jags recap out there every week. So, realistically, you know, two to three videos every week but if you want to go out and support your boy a little more and kind of you know if i don't put a video out you want to see my takes on the game follow me on twitter i'm always tweeting about the jaguars and something else that you can do to support your boy is i am back on that writing grind and i currently work for my local newspaper the lewiston tribune covering high school athletics and i post my articles on there so if you want to go even further and support your boy make sure you go ahead hop over to twitter follow me on twitter and support me there now the first thing i want to talk about in this preview video with the jacksonville jaguars and the houston texans is something that <clears throat> you know has like nothing to do with the game really at at all but who has the C's on their chest, right? And that is the announcement of the captains today. And I said earlier in the intro that this regime is doing things that make this Jaguar team feel completely different from prior teams. And today was one of those days. Urban Meyer held a little meeting and he had, you know, family members, friends record videos saying, hey, congratulations, you are a captain of the Jacksonville Jaguars and you know all the all the guys that were named captains you know looked like they were kind of teary-eyed looked really you know happy to be announced as that captain and you know we're glad to hear their loved ones after you know being grinding in training camp and you know seeing those guys every day I'm sure it's great to see your loved ones on a screen at a place that you're at 24-7 trying to uh, make a team better and, you know, the people that are rooting for you the most are at home. So to see them uh, announce you as a captain, I'm sure, is huge. And, you know, Urban Meyer knows that kind of stuff because, you know, he coached at a college level. And you see those videos on, you know, ESPN, TikTok, whatever, all the time of uh, players getting announced that they get scholarships on the Jumbotron or, you know, big scholarship announcements. So, you know, Urban Meyer looks like a player's coach is something that I think I'm trying to say. You know, and even in 2017 when the Jags were good and you've seen the locker room was really motivated, you know, that was really the players inside of it that were, you know, motivating that locker room, right? Not really necessarily Doug Marone doing that. You know, you didn't hear Calais Campbell, Malik Jackson, Blake Bortles saying, you know, this was a well-coached game or, you know, I got to give my hats off to Doug Marone. Uh, for what he's doing out there. No, they always credited themselves as the players, which, you know, that they do the work on the field, but, you know, you see well-coached, well-oiled machine dynasty football teams, you know, always give credit to their coaches, and, 
you know, I think Urban Meyer, uh, Bevel, Colin, you know, all these coaches that the Jags are bringing in, I think, are starting to kind of mold a winning program. And, you know, it's it's like every regime that the Jags have brought in, um, you've seen it constantly. There's tons of coaches that you can name. Gus Bradley, Doug Marone, Jack Del Rio, et cetera, et cetera. You know, there was never really a coaching staff that really came in and, you know, knocked your socks off. They were always gone within two years, four years, five years. It doesn't matter. Probably kept them too long anyway. But this really feels like the beginning of something special. And that was what the captain announcement really was, was, you know, kind of feeling like a, a moving of the tide. And I think that was like one of the first times this off season that I have really, really felt that. And uh, yeah, that was huge. So today the captains were announced and those captains were Mr. Brandon Linder, who is always a captain for the Jacksonville Jaguars and one of the most criminally underrated centers in the game of football and you know that's gonna happen he doesn't stay healthy very often and you know when he is on the field he plays for the Jacksonville Jaguars and the national media hates the Jaguars and you know I let out a tweet about this not to get too off topic but you know to transition to what I'm about to say um, about the national media I'll go ahead and say Trevor Lawrence was also named a captain for the Jags, who was in a quarterback competition with Gardner Minshew all offseason, who the Jags ended up trading. Um, the national media has a criminal disrespect for this team, and I don't know what the reason is. I seen Good Morning Football post a tweet saying who is going to be the uh, offensive rookie of the year, right? And I get it if one individual person doesn't think it's going to be Trevor Lawrence, right? But when you have four people voting on a NFL Network television program, and none of them say Trevor Lawrence, that is suspect as hell. That is crazy. That is downright disrespectful. Disrespectful to the organization, to Trevor Lawrence, and that is the stuff that the Jags need to start taking personal, right? Because that is unbelievable. Zach Wilson, Justin Fields, who is not even named the starter of the Chicago Bears, and Najee Harris, and Autumn, who I'm leaving out somebody else. But those three all... Got, oh, and Zach Wilson. I don't know if I said Zach Wilson already. But those four all got votes over Trevor Lawrence. And that is just blatant disrespect by the national media in my eyes. That's what that is. But Trevor Lawrence not disrespected by his team, getting voted as a captain. And Marvin Jones, uh, Miles Jack, Shaquille Griffin, and Rayshon Jenkins were all also named captains. And, you know, this is pretty standard stuff. But uh, going back to Trevor Lawrence being named captain, right? I understand this is your first overall pick, right? And, and he's going to be your franchise quarterback. He's going to do great things for you and um, all that. But... At the beginning of training camp, you said there was a quarterback competition, right? It, it made it made it seem like he was going to earn everything. And I get, you know, maybe he earned the right to be captain um, at the end of the season. But one guy that I think got just completely snubbed of being a captain was James Robinson. I mean, this is a guy, right, that is also completely criminally disrespected by the national media, might I add criminally disrespected you know last year's rookie running backs they'll post all of them and they won't even name the best one and that's james robinson you know that's that's that blows my mind it's completely crazy but you know he changed his number and uh, i posted out a tweet the other day saying you know if you bought a number 30 jersey send it to the jags pr and then i'll i'll sign it for you you know he's just a great guy he's a workhorse and I think he's going to continue to be a workhorse for the Jags. I think he's a leader. He may not be a vocal leader, and that might be why he didn't get a captain, you know, vote. But personally, I would have, I would have put the C on James Robinson's chest. I would have, I would have, I would have. But going now into the main preview of this football game against the Houston Texans, I also mentioned in the intro that this game kind of. You know, it's perfect for Urban Meyer and perfect for Trevor Lawrence because of their coaching, I mean, because of their college, you know, eliteness background, right? Being elite in college. Um, because this game kind of feels like 
a week one college game, doesn't it? If you're the Jacksonville Jaguars, it does. This is a team in the Houston Texans that, without Deshaun Watson, you know, and Tyrod Taylor too. I, don't get me wrong. I'm a good, I'm a big Tyrod Taylor guy. I really am. I think, you know, with the Chargers situation, he wasn't terrible in Cleveland, took the Bills to the playoffs. I think he's a very serviceable quarterback. But Houston itself, you know, we've seen it as Jags fans, you know. This is a lose-lose situation. They just are not in a position to be successful because of things above their control. You know, there's just too many distractions going on in the Houston locker room. So if the Jags had to draw a week one opponent for Urban Meyer and Trevor Lawrence's debut to, you know, potentially kick things off with a victory, I think, you know, the best team to do that against is the Houston Texans. And, you know, this is, you know, if Clemson or Urban Meyer when he was at Florida or Ohio State drew the Idaho Vandals to kick off the season. You know, they knew they were going to win this game. So um, I think this is perfect for both uh, college career elite players and coaches and Urban Meyer and Trevor Lawrence and hopefully it works out for him because I think uh, I think the matchups mostly favor the Jags. Uh, we'll dive in now to the offensive matchups and I'm going to give the offensive line an edge and I think this should give them confidence, right? You know, no J.J. Watt, no Jadavion Clowney, um, no Obviously, uh, veteran defensive ends, defensive pass rushers that have, you know, plagued the Jags in the past when they have played this Houston Texans team. Oh my god, I am totally... They do have... Fuck, who do they have? Their defensive tackle. And I'm totally blanking on his name. And if a Texans fan watches this, they are going to eat me alive. So, uh... Yeah, you did. And you know, you know, I know who it is. It's just it's not it's not coming to my head right now. And you know, most of this is off the top. So if is it Whitney Merciless or is he a lot? He was the linebacker. Man, I don't know. Texas fans eat me alive, but they they have some decent interior guys still. But as far as edge rushers coming off, uh, the Jags, you know, this is the weakest Texans pass rush that they've ever faced as a team, and the offensive line should come out with absolute confidence against this uh, Houston Texans defensive line. Now, I think the wide receivers are going to be going up against a secondary that is the strength of this Houston Texans defense, but, you know, there's there's some depth there. You know, Marvin Jones, Vizca Chanel, DJ Chark, that's a good top three to have, and I think a lot of people around the league are going to realize the Jags have a really good, really good top three uh, wide receiver wide receiver group so I think you know one of them's gonna eventually get open and uh, make some plays for for Trevor Lawrence and for the offense and you know if the offensive line could do their job up front James Robinson should be able to find holes and get downhill and I think that's that's kind of what I fully expect you know I think the Texans may come out thinking that you know this is Trevor Lawrence's debut game they're gonna have him kind of try and throw all over us but I think you know James Robinson look for him to get 20 to 30 carries this game I think this is going to be the James Robinson show. I think he's going to get the first touchdown of the game and over 100 yards rushing. I think the big game plan that they should be doing against the Texans is running the ball at the Houston Texans. And as far as these wide receivers, they just need to do what they need to do to get open, right? The easy stuff. Make sure Trevor Lawrence feels confident in this offense and be able to get open. One guy that I think has an opportunity to shine though outside of the wide receivers is the Jaguars starting tight end James O'Shaughnessy. Now the James O'Shaughnessy is somebody I have been a fan of for a long time, but I kind of backed off my my vocal my vocalness on the James O'Shaughnessy, you know, good tight end thing because, you know, the Jags are bringing in guys like Tim Tebow and just randoms and it seems like tight end was always like a top need for the Jags, so I was like Fuck, I guess he's not he's not as good. But I think this game and this year, if he can stay healthy, James O'Shaughnessy is going to show you why he's a franchise tight end. He has talent. He's a good blocker, and he catches the ball well. It was at the end of the tail end of the 2019 season. Him and Gardner Minshew were building chemistry, and he was making plays, and he's reliable. And I just, there's there's nothing really in his game where I thought, you know, he's not a Travis Kelsey, George Kittle, A-tier, elite-tier tight end by any means necessary. But there's that no point when he was in there that he was costing us or he was 
making terrible plays. You know, he is a serviceable to good tight end, and I think this year will be his best year on record, and he's going to make plays. He's going to do good things for the Jacksonville Jaguars, and I think this game against Houston, he's going to have an opportunity to get open. I think he matches up well um, against Houston's linebackers, and I think even in that Dallas game where James got most of the uh, – most of the snaps, him and Trevor were kind of building chemistry. He got three receptions on that opening drive, I believe. So he's gonna get he's gonna get a chance to he's gonna get a chance to shine and show why he could be a good tight end in this league. As for the defensive side of the ball, uh I think this is where it's gonna be a long year, boys and girls. Um I think the secondary will get exposed a little bit because the Texans do have weapons. Like, they do have a solid group of receivers. And Tyrod Taylor, like I said, I'm not going to sit here and bash on the guy because I think he's a good quarterback. I think he's all right. But I do think with the lack of playing time he's had over the last year, maybe in his age getting to him, maybe he he's not going to be, you know, the same Tyrod Taylor we saw in 2017 because, you know, you know, what people don't understand is 2017 was still, what, 18, 19, 20, 21? That was fucking four years ago, right? <coughs> and, like, Blake Bortles, Blake Bortles ain't going to be on a fucking team right now. So, you know, I don't know why. And, and Blake Bortles beat Tyrod Taylor in that playoff game. So I don't know I don't know why, uh, why we should expect too much from Tyrod Taylor. And there I am shitting on Tyrod Taylor when I said I wasn't going to. But, but, they do have weapons. And... I think this secondary is a little shaky, and hopefully, um, hopefully they can prove me wrong. So that's that's what I'm thinking. I think the secondary is where it's going to be so so. But I think this pass rush is going to shine, and it, it completely flip flopped for me, at least from the uh, the beginning stages of the off season to the end. I thought as far as the strength between the pass rush and the secondary. I would have thought the secondary was going to be stronger than the pass rush. But I think right now I'm leaning more towards the pass rush being better than the secondary. Um, just based off of numbers that they got, Josh Allen coming off the edge, Chase on. Um, they're throwing exotic blitzes out there. You can see some quarter, corners getting sacks. And, man, dude, it's just crazy. You never see that for the Jags. So, you know, it's, it's all foreign to us. So um, it's interesting. It's interesting to see a bunch of different players getting sacks, getting – getting after the quarterback, but, you know, if, if they don't get that pressure, I think the secondary may be in for, for a long day. But now on to my final score prediction, and I think the Jacksonville Jaguars will come away 1-0 and on the season, and they're going to beat the Houston Texans 27-21. to It'll still be a tight ball game, but James Robinson – after the Texans call all their timeouts, is going to get a game ceiling first down run on third and two to seal the game. And that will kick off your Jaguars 2021 season. And that was my Jaguars versus Texans week number one preview. What would you guys think? Leave your comments down below. Don't forget, you can check all the links down below as well. You can like me on Facebook at Troop Talks. Follow me on Twitter at Troop Talks or follow me on Instagram at Trey Von Pixley. Also, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. Click the bell icon to get notified every single time I drop a new video. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. And as always, you guys have a great rest of your day.